Hello. Uh, so we are here, and uh, this is going to be the second lecture on Lie groups and Lie algebras. And um, so in the first lecture, we 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 went back to something that you guys were probably uh, familiar with from your uh, from from uh, quantum mechanics. That is, we looked at SU2. SU2 was, if you wish, the simplest of the uh, simplest non-trivial algebra that you could have. And we showed you uh, how one goes about looking at this case. We will return to this in more detail, but in this particular lecture, we want to get to try to understand uh, some general things about Lie groups and Lie algebras. So let's start and let me start sharing screen. Okay, so these are some general discussions. What we are going to be doing is that we are going to suppose that group elements of a group of a group element small g of a group big G depends smoothly on a set of continuous parameters, okay? And we'll call these, these things alpha. So uh, smooth here means that there is some notion of closeness on the group such that, you know, if you, if you suppose that two of the elements are close together in this, uh, in the space of group elements, then the parameter that describes them, uh, those would also be close together. So that's, that's what we mean by this. And uh, so what we will, we will find very useful is this uh, concept of uh, yeah, generators uh, going, yeah, so this is going to be very, uh, very, uh, central to our, the how we are we're going to you know, approach this. So as I say here, it's going to be useful to parameterize these particular particular elements such that when you look at alpha equal to zero, this actually corresponds to what the identity element is. Okay. So let's suppose we are in this some neighborhood of the identity. And this group can be described in terms of, you know, function of n real, uh, n, n real, real parameters, alpha of a, where a runs from one to n. This, uh, you know, and this is when we put all of these things equal to zero, then g alpha is equal to e, okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to go into representations. So, this is going to be central to how we approach the whole game. And uh, so let's, let's see this. So for, uh, I mean, representation, the, the linear operators will be represented in the same way. And you know, what you will have is D alpha when alpha equal to zero is going to be the identity, okay? Now suppose you are in some neighborhood of the identity. So you are, you know, in some small d alpha, I mean, d of d alpha. So this is, I mean, an infinitesimal essentially. So this can be expanded. So you're going to, I mean, Taylor expand this. So what we are going to be doing is that we are going to, have, I mean, obviously have the one, then we'll have d alpha, which is the infinitesimal, which is going to multiply these x a's and these x a's are, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's uh, clear that we, we essentially mean a sum over these as well. So these x a's are going to be, uh, you know, d, d, uh, I mean, del, del alpha a of d alpha. And this you're going to evaluate at alpha equal to zero. We're gonna put a minus i out here because we want these representations to be, uh, so, we want the representation to be unitary and hence 
uh, you know, X is to be Hermitian, okay? So these XAs are going to be called the generators of the group, okay? Uh, so now if all these parameters needed to distinguish the different elements are, uh, so, so if that is the case of all, all parameters that needed to distinguish these things, then XAs are actually independent, okay? So though, though we can define uh, the, uh, I mean, generators for an abstract group without mentioning the representation at all, we'll actually go through the route of trying to, uh, you know, trying to do this via, I mean, via the representation. This is, if you wish, the more uh, physics-y way of trying to do it, okay? We, you know, nature in a sense is, is going to be linked up to, uh, I mean, what representations we use and so on. So uh, that's what we are going to do, okay? Now, as we go away from the identity, we can do it in various ways. And, uh, and there's this, uh, I mean, useful way of trying to do this. And we, we will focus on that particular parameterization. What we will do is we will take this, uh, I mean, an infinitesimal group element, and we are, we are going to take it to a very large power. So you take this, and you are going to raise it to a large power. So what that means is that, uh, you know, due to, due to group properties, this is always going to give you another group element, right? So this suggests, you know, one, one element multiplied with, with the other always gives you, you know, a thir third element of the group. So, you know, if you are going to multiply this n times, it is always going to be a member of the group. So this suggests that you know if you are uh, defining the group elements, uh, so there is a way then of defining the representation of group elements for a finite alpha, and you do that by raising this, uh, yeah, I mean whole, whole whole to the k, where this k uh, you you can take the k out to infinity, and as you know this particular limit just gives you the exponential of i alpha. I mean, I alpha XA, okay. Again, this must go to the representation of a group element uh, be, uh, because this, this, this guy, uh, uh, this one plus I alpha X, XA by K becomes the, I mean, representation of the um, infinitesimal, <laughs> I mean, infinitesimal, uh, I mean, element as k becomes large. So as k becomes large, I mean, you know, you, 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 you sort of um, move, you know, this term becomes smaller and it just goes, goes to one. So, 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 you know, so this, this is, this uh, all works out well. Um, so uh, this defines a particular sort of uh, parameterization, which we call the exponential, exponential, uh, I mean, exponential parameterization. And uh, so, and we can write the, I mean, elements in terms of, I mean, terms of, of, I mean, of the generators. This is useful because, uh, you know, as I write here, since unlike group elements, generators form a vector space and you can add them, add them together. You can multiply them by real numbers. And what we are going to do is that we are going to use any, any the, the, I mean, we are, we are going to refer to any, I mean, element of this real vector, real linear space spanned by these axes by, but I mean, so we are going to use the term generator for any of these guys, okay? Not only for this, but we, we can, you know, we can find any other uh, any other sort of uh, uh, I mean element of uh, I mean of of this uh, vector space, and we can call it I mean we can call that particular thing the the uh, generator of the group. Very good. So that was that was this exponential uh, I mean exponential map, which is actually very useful. Now let's try. So this is something about the group. Let's try and understand uh, what happens what is a Lie algebra, okay? So what we do is uh, we are looking at, uh, 
um, one, you know, one, one parameter family of group elements. And there's, this is uh, U alpha and I, I uh, labeled as either the I alpha, uh, I mean, I lambda A, A alpha into XA. So if we do, uh, so uh, what, what, what we do is, uh, so the group, group, I mean, the group, uh, I mean, the group multiplication would mean U alpha one, uh, I mean, U of lambda one, U lambda two is U of lambda one plus lambda one plus lambda two. And suppose we choose a, I mean, particular XA, right? So let, let's, let's do that. So then it's, it's obvious that this goes through. Okay, but if we are uh, if we are going to multiply group elements generated by two linear, I mean two different linear combination of, I mean of uh, generators, then it's very clear that this might this this might not add up, right? So this is this is going to this is going to be dependent on what you 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 said, I mean actually put here. So in general. If you multiply these two, I mean exponentials, this is not true. Okay. On the other hand, the exponential forms a, I mean representation of the group, at least close close to the identity. So the product of of these two guys has to be the exponential of another, I mean, of another generator. We are we are at least dealing close to the identity. So this is something. So this is some i delta a into x. Okay. It may not be, I mean, uh, you know, alpha a plus uh, uh, beta a, but it's clearly something. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to expand uh, for some. Uh, I mean, we are we are we are going to uh, expand, and we are we're going to find something interesting. So let's do this. Let's expand. So I uh, delta a x a. What we are what we will do is you know. So this this one is what this one you know going back is 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 this guy here. So uh, you know we add and subtract one, and this is this is uh, the log of this guy. So now let's just focus on this part of it. Okay, let's call this k. So what is either the i alpha a x a and either the i beta b x b? So if you expand this out, this is either the i alpha a x a minus e to the i alpha x a squared, and so on and so forth. And there is a similar expansion for x, b, and beta b. Very good. So what do you have? Uh, what you have is you have an expansion of this form. Uh, you have to keep in mind that you should uh, do things systematically. And you know what is in the left, you have to keep on the left. What is in the right, you have to keep on the right. And uh, you know, the ordering is going to matter, right? Now, this is K and we have one plus K. So what we need is, uh, so we need to expand log of one plus K. So this is going to be a form like this, all right? So now what you do is expand this, okay? So you, you expand it. So you write down what, what K is. You write down what k squared is and be a little careful about this, okay? So what you notice is if you write this whole, whole, whole business down, if you were looking at higher terms of the expression, they would have just gone away if x's are numbers. But x's are linear operators which do not, uh, I mean, commute with each other in general. So what you have is that this is not equal to zero, okay? So I delta A X A, you can do, do the math. This is a, a reasonably straightforward thing to do. You'll find is I alpha A X A plus I beta A, A beta A X A minus half of this guy, okay? 
So you're going to get uh, some xas and uh, so alpha a x a beta b x b. So you have to keep in mind that this goes like this, okay? So now what have we done? So we have just, uh, you know, used the group, uh, group property and we have used smoothness that allows us to actually, uh, you know, write down things using expansions. So, I mean, Taylor expansions are what, what we have done. So at the end of the day, this particular uh, bracket is going to be I delta. I mean, so this, this particular bracket is going to be some delta C, uh, alpha C, beta C of XC. This is some object. So this is, let's call this some, I mean, gamma C of XC. Now this has to be true for all alpha and beta. If uh, this, this has to be true for all alpha and beta, then what is happening is, you know, uh, this, I mean, gamma C has to be, uh, you know, some, some alpha A into beta B into F A B C, where A B C is some, some sort of, I mean, uh, uh, constant that you're going to get out of this. So obviously, so your, your indices on the left and the right have to match up. So what you have is that your, uh, so what you have, so if you, if you take these alphas and uh, betas off, uh, I mean, it, it, has, it has to be, right? It has to be true for all alphas and betas. So the alphas and betas from both sides have to go away. So what you have is XA, XB is I, F, A, B, C. I, F, A, B, C, X, C. And you have to keep in mind that this, this particular thing also should, should flip a sign when you move A and B around. So, so this FABC has to have the property that F, uh, FABC is equal to minus FBAC, okay? Now, the, the weird part, the, uh, I mean, amazing part, if you wish, is that you could, think that you know if we were to maintain this group uh, group multiplication that if you expand to higher and higher orders it might just require more and more things and we might need as i write out here ex extra conditions but remarkably this is this is not the case and just by actually uh, uh, writing this down writing this uh, i mean commutation down uh, you can actually fix it to all orders, okay? I, I urge you to try and look at this in, in uh, I mean, for the next order and see what exactly is happening. So what I, what I want to stress is these FABCs are very important and these are called structure, I mean, structure constants of the group. And what we have above here is called, is called the Lie algebra of the group, okay? So that's, that's what a Lie algebra of a Lie group is. Okay, so that's, that was an, an important thing. And uh, so let's just, uh, I mean, say a few more things before, uh, before we stop for the day. So if we were to have unitary representations of the algebra, then X is are going to be a Hermitian. So if we, if we just uh, take this guy, so if you take the uh, dagger of this, then what is going to happen is that you will find that, you know, there, is, there was an I, so you're going to get a minus I out here. There's a star and XC is equal to the XC <laughs> dagger. So the dagger here interchanges A and B. And uh, so this is if, uh, you know, B, A, C, and X C, and these these two have to be equal. So F A B C has to be equal to F. I mean F star. Uh, I mean A B C. So F A B C actually have to be real. Okay. So it's it's important to keep this in mind. And there is another thing that that we want to add is the thing that I stressed when we were looking at S U two. This was that the 
Jacobi identity has to hold. So you have, you know, the bracket of XA with the bracket of XB, XC, and the cyclic, I mean, cyclic permutation of this has to be equal to zero. Uh, for for uh, the algebras with only finite uh, dimensional representations, which we would mostly be interested in, you would find that this is mostly a trivial thing. But if you know, if you were, if you want to do it more abstractly, this becomes more non-trivial. Okay, so uh, we want to move into something else right now, and uh, before we go into that, yes, so. Uh, so that's what the uh, you know so what's that's that's what we have for uh, this was what was uh, what was happening I mean, this is how you uh, defined the algebras and now we are going to be looking at some more uh, representations and so on so that's what's next.